Hello guys and welcome to the next lesson. Today we are learning about sport and resistance. This is a very important lesson. This is the first thing I look for when I'm analyzing a chart. Support and resistance are the levels we look to trade from. So let's get into it. What is support? Support is an area on a chart that the price has dropped to but struggled to break below. Support is the price level at which demand, buying power, is strong enough to prevent the price from declining further. As you can see in this photo, price struggled to go below this level three times. This is how we know where a support level is. What is resistance? Resistance is an area on the chart that price has risen to but struggled to break above. Resistance is the price level at which supply, selling power, is strong enough to prevent the price from rising further. As you can see on the screen here, price struggled to go above this level twice. This is how we know where a resistance level is. So when we're looking at support and resistance, there are strong levels and minor levels. Support and resistance is a pretty straightforward concept. Support is a level that price has struggled to go below and resistance is a level that price has struggled to go above. The strength of a support and resistance level can be determined by the strength of the price reaction off it. Any price area that reverses a trend is a strong support or resistance level. So as you can see on the screen, price was moving down to a support level and it reversed the trend completely. That's how we know where a strong support level is. The same when it was moving up. Price was moving up to a resistance level and it reversed the price completely. That's how we find strong resistance levels. So minor levels. Minor support and resistance levels don't hold up. For example, if the price is trending lower, it will make a low, then bounce, then start to drop again. That low can then be marked as a minor support level. So as you can see on the screen, you've got a strong resistance level and strong support level. You can see price moving up and down in between those two levels. So each time price makes a new low, it bounces off it a little bit and then goes down even further. Them levels you can mark as minor support levels. It's the same when price is trending higher. It will make a high, then bounce, then start to rise again. That high can be marked as a minor resistance level. So as you can see, you have the strong support level, strong resistance level, price bounced off the strong resistance level, and it hit minor resistance levels in between the strong support and resistance levels. So let's move on to the charts and actually plot some support and resistance levels. So the best way to find support and resistance levels is on the higher time frame. Remember, the higher the time frame, the stronger the levels are. I use the daily chart for my support and resistance levels. So step one, on the daily chart, place a horizontal line on all the strong and minor support and resistance levels. Remember, strong levels are where the trend has changed and minor levels are the highs and lows within a trend in between the strong levels. Step two, label the strong levels so you know what is strong and what is minor. We don't need to label the minor levels. We know the minor levels are in between the strong levels. Step three, place a box around the horizontal lines. This will act as a zone. Price will not always hit a certain price exactly, so we use these as a guideline.
So there we have it. There's all our strong and minor support and resistance levels. So let's talk about breakouts. A breakout is when price moves outside of a strong support or resistance level with increased volume. When trading breakouts, it's important to realize that there are two main types, continuation breakouts and reversal breakouts. Knowing what type of breakout you are seeing will help you make sense of what is actually happening in the big picture of the market. Continuation breakouts. Sometimes when there is an extensive move in one direction, the market will often take a breather. This occurs when buyers and sellers pause to see what they should do next. As a result, you will see a period of range bound movement called consolidation. Reversal breakouts. Reversal breakouts start off the same way as continuation breakouts in the fact that after a long trend, there tends to be a pause or consolidation. The only difference is that after this consolidation, price moves in the opposite or reverse direction. So how do we identify if it's a continuation breakout or a reversal breakout? We need to wait for a break at either end of the box when the price is consolidating, but we need to be careful of fake outs. Fake outs occur when the price breaks past a certain level, but doesn't continue to accelerate in that direction. Instead, what you might have seen was a short spike followed by the price moving back into its trading range. As you can see above, a short spike was made above the resistance level and the candle closed. Then it began to drop back into the trading range of the consolidation. A way to combat fake outs is by not taking the first breakout you see. How to trade breakouts. Good way to enter on a breakout is to wait until the price retraces back to the original breakout level and then wait to see if it bounces back to create a new high or low, depending on which direction you are trading. By waiting to see if the price will continue to move into your intended direction, you give yourself a better chance of making a profitable trade. The downside to this is that you may miss out on some trades in which the price moves quickly without any hesitation. In the above scenario, you would have got into a short trade on the retest of the resistance level where the initial breakout occurred. Short means to sell and long means to buy. Now let's go onto the charts and look at some breakouts and fakeouts. So let's first find a section where there was some consolidation in the market. So as you can see here, price is moving up and then started to consolidate around here. Let's mark out the levels. So the main resistance level is there. The main support level is there. So this is our consolidation area where price was in an uptrend and now it's slowed down and we don't know where the market was going. A fake out happened here where price broke out of the resistance level but then came straight back into it. So that would be a fake out. Here is where a reversal breakout happened. Price was in an uptrend, it come into the consolidation box it then come down and then broke out of the support level. To avoid a fake out, we wouldn't have got into this trade on the initial breakout. It then come down and then it retests that level and then continued down. So we would have got into this trade here. Now let's find a continuation breakout. As you can see, price is trending up here. then hit this level of resistance and got stuck into a box. There then was two fake outs here Price actually broke out here and continued the trend. This is why you should always be careful on trading the first breakout. So now we've spoke about breakouts, fakeouts and how to trade breakouts. Let's talk about how to trade at support and resistance. Only trade at strong and minor support and resistance levels. Never trade in between them and only trade with the trend. On the chart on the screen, you can see price has left a strong resistance and now is in a downtrend and is below a minor resistance level. We would only anticipate a trend reversal at strong levels. So in this situation, we would be looking to sell from this level to the next strong level. 
we can monitor the trade at each minor level and use this as profit targets and stop loss targets. Once price has passed these levels, we can move our stop loss further into profit. We will be going through entries, stop loss levels and take profit levels into more detail in another lesson. When it comes to entering the market, you can never get a perfect entry, but always try to enter the market as close to your support and resistance levels as possible. When trading at a minor support and resistance level, always wait for one to two four hour solid candles below or above that level, or one strong price action candle that matches your bias. Refer back to the price action lesson. When trading at a strong support and resistance level, this is the area that in the past has changed the trend. So we need to be patient and wait for a sign that the trend will change. Or we might get a breakout of the strong level. If a breakout does occur, I always wait for a daily candle closure below or above that level before entering the market. If the breakout happens too quickly and you think you have missed the move, don't panic. When strong levels are broken, they usually get retested, but that is not always the case. When a resistance level is broken and gets retested, that level then becomes support. And when a support level gets broken and retested, that then becomes resistance. Remember, support is always below price and resistance is always above price. So how do we trade at minor levels? When trading at a minor support level, price would be in a downtrend, so you wouldn't be anticipating a trend change at this level. The price should continue past to the next, but we don't just assume that's going to happen, so we need to wait for some signs that it will continue. There are three possible entry methods you could use to enter below a minor support level. One, initial breakout. This is the first candle to break through the support. Retest. This is the retest of the level that was initially broken. Remember, when support breaks and is retested, that level then becomes resistance. Number three, price action candles. Assuming you have missed the first two methods but price is still below the support, wait for one to two solid four hour bearish candles or a strong bearish price action candle. So that could be a shooting star, evening star, engulfing or tweezer top. How to trade at support at a strong level. When trading at strong levels, this is the area where the trend has changed in the past, so we need to be more patient. As you can see on the screen, price was in a downtrend approaching a strong support level. It hit and reversed into an uptrend. There are a few methods you can use for entering and identifying a reversal. Number one, price action candles. If you see bullish candlesticks, this is a sign price will be reversing. Two, patterns. Certain patterns will form at strong levels indicating price will reverse double bottom or an inverse head and shoulders. Don't worry, we will be going through patterns in another lesson. And number three, trend lines. Adding a trend line and waiting for the trend line to break will indicate a reversal. We will also be going through trend lines in another lesson as well. How to trade at resistance, minor levels. When trading at a minor resistance level, price would be in an uptrend, so you won't be anticipating a trend change at this level. The price should continue past to the next, but we don't just assume that's going to happen, so we need to wait for some signs that it will continue. There are three possible entry methods you could use to enter above a minor resistance level. Number one, initial breakout. This is the first candle to break through the resistance. Number two, retest. This is the retest of the level that was initially broken. Remember, when resistance breaks and is retested, that level becomes support. Number three, price action candles. Assuming you have missed the first two methods but price is still above the resistance, wait for one or two solid four hour bullish candles or a strong bullish price action candle. That could be a hammer, morning star, engulfing or tweezer bottom. How to trade at a strong resistance level. When trading at a strong level, this is the area where the trend has changed in the past so we need to be more patient. As you can see on the screen, price is in an uptrend approaching a strong resistance level. It hit and reversed into a downtrend. There are a few methods you can use for entering and identifying a reversal. Number one, price action candles. If you see bearish candlesticks, this is a sign price will be reversing. Patterns. Certain patterns will form at strong levels indicating price will reverse, a double top or a head and shoulders. And number three, trend lines. Adding a trend line and waiting for the trend line to break will indicate a reversal. When we are waiting for strong or minor support and resistance levels to break, we first have to wait for a candle closure below or above that level. If the candle pushes through the support level, it needs to close below it for it to have broken that support completely. If the candle pushes through the support, then closes above it, it has not been broken. And at resistance, if the candle pushes through the resistance level, it needs to close above it for it to have broken that resistance completely. If the candle pushes through the resistance, then closes below it, it has not been broken. So that is the end of the support and resistance lesson. That was a lot of information to take on board, so please redo this lesson if you have to. We will be going through patterns, trend lines, entries, stop loss levels and take profit levels more into the course, so this lesson will make more sense after them. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. See you there.